I was gonna create like a Mother's Day brunch collection without some sort of pastry, did you? It's royalty soaps, like our entire aesthetic looks like cake. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. My name is Katie Carson. I am one of the soap makers here on this channel. The Duchess of Suds, as I was so named many years ago. Some people think that this was like a self-imposed title. It wasn't. <laughs> and today we are gonna be making toasted almond and peach pastry artisan soap. I have to show you guys the design I drew up for this one because it's actually one of the ones I'm actually kind of proud of. I'm not an artist, but I like to draw a little bit. Look at it. Does that look delectable? Do you like all the little squares in here? Those are going to be made out of cold process soap. Got some oatmeal in there. We got some almonds on top, a little peach embed. It's going to be great. Today's video is once again sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that has over 20 Five thousand that's right 25,000 classes for everything from baking there is soap making stuff on there there really is everything about even learning about like rocks and crystals and stuff like anything you want to know Skillshare has a class on it I am all about fueling creativity and constant learning and constant growing in both a personal life and also in business if you are into small business and doing that sort of thing so Skillshare it makes it really easy for you to do that it's super affordable the premium Premium membership is less than 10 bucks a month. There are over 7 million people learning with Skillshare, you guys. That's how good it is. And if you sign up via the link down below, the first 500 people who do so get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. Another thing, by the way, that I like about it, I should just go ahead and mention, is that they really encourage community within the classes, like people talking to one another. You can join certain groups um, if you have a special interest that you have in common with other people. They're also in the group. You can talk with them about it. And everyone is so friendly and so helpful. And there's just so much good information shared there. It's a super positive community. So thank Thanks very much to Skillshare once again for sponsoring this video and without further ado, let's make a pastry soap. You can probably see that we are using a little bit less oil today than normal and that's because we have some cold process soap cubes we're going to be adding to this design later on. So whereas I normally have 105 ounces of liquid oils, today I have 70. I'm going to pour my lye water solution down my stick blender and yes, I have a mismatched bottom and top. So let's blend this up on low until just past emulsion. And emulsion being achieved, it's time to split off our batch. We are only having one accent color because the cubes on the inside are gonna be sort of the, the showstopper, if you will. So the accent color is going to be orange. So we're adding orange Vibrance Mica from Nurture Soap. And the rest of the soap base is going to be a creamy white color. So we're adding some titanium dioxide mixed with water. I get my titanium dioxide from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And also to the white, we're adding a little bit of apricot seed powder just to give it a little bit of texture, a little tiny bit of exfoliation, and sort of make it look like a pastry. So let's blend these up real quick. I'll go ahead and scrape down the sides of the containers. And as you can see, that orange is pretty potent because I wanted it to be a nice contrast to the little soap cubes we're going to be adding. And now for the fragrance oil. I have made my own custom peach blend for this soap and I'm gonna share it with you guys. It is 50% Georgia peach from Fragrance Buddy and 50% peach perfection from Nature's Garden. And together Together, they are the ultimate peachy combo. I also have used less fragrance oil with this batch because the batch is smaller and because the little peach embeds are actually already fragrant. So you're not getting any less fragrance. We're just adding it in different time. This fragrance oil combination behaves really, really well. So if you'd like to use it for yourself, don't be worried about acceleration or separation or ricing of your soap batter. It's going to perform beautifully 
beautifully. Now I'm going to take the orange accent color and we're gonna pour it into this large white container, just like so. We're not gonna mix it or anything. We're just gonna scrape out the orange container now and then we will start pouring into our brambleberry molds. I've got my two brambleberry molds ready to go and neatly marked by my brother Kenny. They've been lined with the silicone liners from Brambleberry and we're just going to add one very small layer. This is just so all the little soap cubes I'm about to add won't be sitting directly on the bottom of the soap. Here's what all the peachy little soap cubes look like. As you can see they are a light peach color. So I am just going to sprinkle these in liberally. I have I think about 40 ounces or so of these peach cubes. So quite a lot. Quite a lot indeed. And once again I just wanted to make sure they weren't sitting directly on the bottom because that's not the neatest look for soap and it also can make it kind of hard to cut. I'm also not worrying if some of the soap cubes are falling on my table. I'll just go back and pick them up later. This is looking like an orange creamsicle. <laughs> or one of those really yummy like peaches and cream mint things that old people give to you. I don't know what those are, but they're delicious. So I'm gonna add a little more in now just to kind of cover up a little bit of that first layer and give the rest of them something to stick to. And let me tell y'all something, peach fragrance oil, not that easy to get your hands on. A lot of suppliers carry it and it just, it's a hard one to nail and make it smell really accurate. Add a little more peachy goodness in there. Ooh, it looks so delicious. I'm just gonna smear this in a little bit. Then I'm gonna scrapey scrapey out my big containy, and then we'll tap these down on the ground. That being tapped down on the ground, we're coming in with a little more here. You guys have been asking for a different type of piping. Well, this isn't exactly a different type of piping, but it is piping on a slightly different textured surface because we're adding all these little peach pieces up to the top. Originally, I thought it might be kind of fun to keep the peach pieces towards the bottom, but as I started pouring, I realized probably would be better to have them all throughout the soap. Now taking my spatula, I'm just gonna make sure that everybody on top here is covered with some of the soap. That way nobody falls out whenever it's time to cut the bars tomorrow. And if there are a few that haven't been covered, it's not that big a deal because we're gonna pour some of our piping over this to really seal it all in. All right, that looks good. So let's go ahead and mix up our soap frosting. Before my soap frosting has set up and it is still in a liquidy state, I am gonna pour a little bit of it on top just to get into all the cracks like I talked about. Seal all those little soap pieces in so that nobody's tempted to run away when it's time to cut the soap. It really doesn't take much to do this, but if you have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of embeds in your soap, this is a really good idea if you're gonna put frosting on top because why not? And then after I pour it in really liquidy, I'll kind of move it around to make sure that it's gotten into all the gaps. I'm just gonna clean up these little edges here because they're bothering me. And we'll wait now for the frosting to set up so that we can pipe the top. So my soap frosting has set up. Finally. Honestly, it's a little thick now because I got a little bit sidetracked. Sometimes when I'm waiting for my piping to set up, I'll go get on the computer and watch a YouTube video or something. I was watching a Skillshare video just now because I want to make biscotti from scratch. I'm not, I'm not like excessively good at baking. I just really like doing it. And I'm definitely obsessed with the Great British Baking Show. I've been watching that for years. And now I'm I'm just starting to get confident enough to sort of play around with patisserie and things like that. Now also, I don't want to make it sound like I'm, I'm too confident here, all right? I just made cinnamon rolls from scratch and now <laughs> I'm calling that confidence. But every time I've tried to make a cake or something, it hasn't just completely sucked. And I feel like that's why I'm like, all right, I can do this, I can do this, because I always think that I'm gonna end up with something that's just burnt, 
or it's just liquid in the pan, but that doesn't seem to happen. I mean, it's like following the instructions actually gets good results or something. But yeah, that's just another thing to like about Skillshare is that they're very detailed with their instructions. I'll go read in recipes online and they'll just expect you to know so much already. And then I kind of feel like just absolutely incapable and just kind of dumb when I don't or they use phrases I don't know like am I the only one that feels that way when reading online recipes <laughs> but my mom really likes biscotti with her coffee so I'm trying to learn how to do it so that maybe I can make her some for Mother's Day now these tops are kind of flat they don't have that last little peak on top and I've done that on purpose so that some of the decorations I'm putting on there will be able to grip a little better the first embed we're putting on are these peach slices and I can't remember where we got the mold off the top of my head but I promise I'll leave you guys a link in the description box below and pregnancy brain is not getting the best of me today when it comes to putting in these embeds no sir we are going to remember every single one this time failure is not an option. Y'all, I can't tell you how happy I am to have you guys here today. Our little soap family just keeps growing and growing. And I'm honestly so baffled, but I'm just so grateful that you're here. I hope you're being inspired and that you're learning something. And even if you never intend on making soap or buying soap and you're just here for the community and to watch me do it, that's, that's awesome. I've always said that if you don't want to buy anything from me, that is 100% fine. Just you watching this video is supporting me. And I know handmade cold process soap is not some people's things that maybe they'd rather spend that money on going out to a movie or getting new clothes. Whatever. I don't care. Do what you want. <laughs> that's always something that's just really irritated me about marketing is like making it look like you're a bad person or that you like need this product or you'll die. Like, no, you won't. <laughs> There's plenty of places for you to get soap. The next thing we're adding on top are these almond slivers. This is gonna give it a pastry look. They're really just for pretty. You could definitely remove them before using these bars if you wanted to, but they're also an all natural additive. Also, almonds just make me feel really fancy. <laughs> and to pull it all together and once again, to sort of stick with that pastry theme, we're gonna put a little bit of oatmeal on top too. And there's one final thing I feel I need to add. We're going to add a little bit of a melt and pour drizzle because we want this to look kind of soupy, like a bunch of runny, gooey, sticky, peach deliciousness is just bubbling out of the top of a crumble. And we added a little shimmer in there just for fun because it is still a soap after all. This is also going to lock in all of those little loose pieces. And I'm adding this quite liberally over these bars. Quite liberally indeed. I don't have to worry too much about the top looking overdone because once we cut it, people are going to be looking at it mainly from the front. So it's not going to look like like too much. I don't know, I'm sure there are some people who would argue that my entire soap collection is too much. <laughs> and with a quick spritz of rubbing alcohol to seal it all in and keep that glycerin soap from attracting sweat, we done! And here's what they look like up close. You can see that melt and pour inside really does look like juicy peach syrup. And I'm really liking the addition of almonds. I feel like that might be something I should add in the future to other bars. So I am gonna let these sit for 18 to 24 hours and then I will come back and we'll chop them up and take a look at the inside after this quick commercial break. Well, I thought this looked pretty good yesterday, but it's looking even better today. It's giving me some major peaches and cream oatmeal vibes. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on its side just to protect those little embeds. My brother failed to clean the soap cutter. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> So I'll be doing that now. Gonna line it up real quick. And we're gonna press down with our multi-bar cutter available at Nurture Soap. 
slip one right out of the middle and this is what it looks like on the inside. Now the camera is not going to be able to pick up the most incredible peachy tones in this soap. It's going to make it look a little more brown I would say than it is in real life. But you can definitely still see in here in the swirl that dark peach color and then up in the piping and in the base color you see all the little apricot seeds and then on top we have the almonds with the drizzle and the peach as well. This is definitely the most edible looking soap of this month in my opinion. And that fragrance is divine. I highly encourage you guys to try it out in your own creations. Caleb joins me with the question of the day and Kenny sits in the background probably to snicker at it. <laughs> Would you rather... <laughs> What? I didn't follow. Would you rather be forced to dance every time you heard music or be forced to sing along to any song you hear? Why do your questions, why are they just crafted to make people uncomfortable? Wait, what? So you have to dance every time you hear music or you have to sing? Yeah. Every time you hear a song, it's the same thing. It's just dancing or singing yeah. for music. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I should redo it. <laughs> Anytime you experience music, you would have to dance or sing. Unless it's classical music. <laughs> and you're immune. Would you rather be forced to dance every time you heard music, or be forced to sing along to music? <laughs> For 24 hours every day. Um, I feel like the singing can be done quietly and it doesn't have to be done for every single song since there are songs that don't have lyrics. So I'm going to do that one because I feel like it's the safe bet and I'm boring. <laughs> what about you, Caleb? Are you going to pick the polar opposite just to be contrary? I might sing quietly. I think that's funny. Yeah, you sound convinced that you think it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Point taken. If you would like to vote in the clip. Are you not going to ask Kenny? <laughs> I need practice both singing and dancing, so either one's a pretty good option. Kenneth, I think your dancing's impeccable. <laughs> well, then I'd, I'd pick singing, because I need some practice. It's a good confidence builder. <laughs> If you would like to vote in the question of the day, please click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Well, do you want to eat it? <laughs> I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. This soap will be available to purchase on May 6th, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time with the other Mother's Day and brunch related artisan soaps. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And once again, you guys, the first 500 people who sign up with the link down below get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, all you have to do is click the subscribe button, give it a big thumbs up. You could leave me a comment down below if you like. I do try to read as many as possible and you can follow me on Instagram hopefully by now I better have had my child <laughs> so there might be cute baby photos over there at this point in time and be sure you do something fun for yourself today whether that is going down to your local bakery and buying yourself a treat that maybe you're splurging a little bit to have but you know you deserve or going out to your local farmers market and getting yourself some fresh produce locally. I didn't know Terrell had a farmer's market, but it actually does, and I really need to go. Either way, do something that makes you happy, and I'll see you guys soon. So until next time, bye for now. Meow.